You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. I am Seth Peterson. I am Debbie Hedren. I'm Rhonda Schwartz. I'm Josh Roberts. This is Justin Gilson. Hello, I'm Victor Webb. Hi, this is Charlotte Ross. Hi, this is Ed Begley Jr. What's up, you guys? This is AJ from the Backstreet Boys. Hi, this is Shannon Elizabeth, and you're listening to Talking Pets. Talking Pets. Talking Pets. And you're listening to Talking Pets. Talking Pets. Talking Pets. With John Patch. John Patch. You're listening to Talking Pets with John Patch. Hello, America, and welcome to Talkin' Pets with your host, John Patch. Join John and his expert guests with all of your pet questions, concerns, comments, and stories. Now it's time for Talkin' Pets with your host, John Patch. And welcome to Talkin' Pets, heard coast to coast on your favorite radio station. This is Talkin' Pets, and I'm your host, John Patch. Joining us is Radeef Veterinarian here to answer your medical questions and your behavior questions about your pets at 866-606-TALK. That's 866-606-8255. The show is produced by Mr. Bob Page. Hey, boss, What's up, Bobby? Oh, you know, hanging out, having a good day. We welcome your calls and questions at 866-606-TALK. That's 866-606-8255. So pick up the phone, give us a call, we want to talk to you. We have a special guest joining us in this hour. His name is James Mahoney. The book they authored is called From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. We're going to be talking with James about his book. We're even going to be giving away two or three books. So if you've got a question or a comment, we welcome them in at 866-606-TALK. 866-606-8255. And we'll send you out a copy of the book. The show is also produced by Mr. Zach at Business Talk and Lifestyle Talk Radio Networks. We welcome your calls and questions. Pick up the phone. Give us a call. 866-606-8255. I'm John Patch. And Dr. Linda Register. And this is Talkin' Pets. A native of Ireland who came to the United States in 1972, graduated from veterinary school at Glasgow Veterinary College in Scotland, and holds a master's degree in comparative mammalian reproduction and embryology. A veterinarian for more than 40 years, he has traveled around the world to treat all kinds of animals and has grown to understand and appreciate the individuality of all creatures. He spent the majority of his career as a veterinarian in research laboratories working with chimpanzees and other primates. We want to welcome on to the program the author from Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched Our Souls, or My Soul, actually, is James Mahoney. James, welcome to the program, Talking Pets. How are you? Hi, James. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Yep. Do you hear me well? I hear you well. Good. It's nice to have you on the program with us. I want to introduce Thank you, you off the bat to nice Dr. Thank you to ask me. Thank you. I want to introduce you to uh, Dr. Linda. Hi, Dr. Mahoney. Hello, Dr. Linda. Now, how long, i got to ask you, from elephants to mice, um, actually, um, it was funny because when Linda showed up for the show today, she got a copy of your book here. Oh, yeah? It's on her book list. <laughs> I, I uh, recently, just with a couple of months, uh, was uh, viewing it through one of my book clubs. Oh, yes? And I'm like, oh, that might be an interesting book. You know, sometimes I, I wait a couple months and see, you know, kind of look at them again and again before I purchase them to see if they still interest me. Yeah. Because what interests me one month may not interest me the next. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, this is great. I've been looking at this one. So you still feel it interests you? Yes, I do. Oh, I'll I... have to add it to my pile because I've recently acquired a large stack of books to read. Ah. Uh... But I'll put it near the top, I think. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Now, I want to get into a couple topics with you on the book, From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. Now, first of all, it's put up by Wiley Publishing, so if somebody wants to purchase it, they can find it in bookstores, I would imagine, and also online, like Amazon.com, correct? Yes, it'll be in bookstores, um, I believe, on the 27th of April. The 27th of April, it's, it's going to be hitting stores. Yeah. 
From Elephants to Mice, you know what? I'm a big fan of this book. And right off the bat, I had said to Linda, um, a very dear friend and a very nice man, um, Jeffrey Mason, I don't know if you know him or not, wrote a yes, book. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he wrote a book many, many years ago called When Elephants Weep. Yes, I know. I use that book quite a bit. Yeah, and that, that book is just one of my favorite books of all times, and yep. he, From Elephants to Mice is right there with it. <laughs> so, you know, congratulations on writing a very uh, heartfelt book and, and something that I want to talk to you about. And we are putting uh, the phone number out there. If somebody has a question for James Mahoney, the author of From Elephants to Mice, you can give us a call, and we'll send you out a complimentary copy of the book, even if you have a comment, at 866... That's very nice of you to do that. Thank you. 866-606-TALK. 866-606-8255. Now, you get into a bunch of different things, uh, James, and uh, right off the bat, I want to you know, get into a couple topics with you. Um, and before we get a little bit heavy, I do want to mention like your, your chapters, for instance. You get into uh, Chapter 1, The Power of Dignity and Courage. Um, you also get into Chapter 2, A Life in Captivity. I think that speaks for itself. So what's your opinion about your personal opinion, and how do you deal with it in the book when you talk about everything from zoos or to circuses or something where animals are kept in captivity? What's your opinion on that? Well, I have my opinions, but um, my main experience in the captive situation is in research laboratories. So I don't work in zoos. I don't work in sanctuaries, but I deal a lot with sanctuaries. For example, I, I deal with the... Uh, Wildlife Way Station, which is very close to you, to you in Los Angeles. Yeah, actually, I've, I've been there a couple of times. Matter yeah. of fact, it's ironic. I was just actually looking them up this week. Yeah, well, um, a lot of the chimps that I know are there. And uh, I was visiting not very long ago, and I have been for the last few years. And th- those are the sorts of backgrounds that I have real personal experience of. I have opinions about zoos and various other uh, captive situations, but I, in all honesty, don't have experience of them. So you know, it, I don't want to say something or be led into saying something that um, is not based on actual working knowledge. I think the thing that that's interesting to me is that you know, for instance, I, I was just reading a report about tigers. For instance, there's only maybe 3,500 left in the world, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. where there's about maybe 2,000 of them kept in captivity. Yes. And they're trying to initiate this new breeding program now out there and, and going full force on it um, so that they can keep the, the tiger population alive. Yes. And in captivity, a lot of animals, they say, seem to live longer than they do actually in the wild. I guess there's a lot of different things that de- envelop there because when you've got human encroachment in the wild, um, disease and so on and so forth, you know, the world is just becoming a much more massive overabundance of people, you might say. But yes, in, in sure. zoos, they have the, the, the capabilities to actually breed them within there, within their own species, hopefully, um, and care for them there. Yes, I, I think the zoos um, are trying to come out of antiquity and develop themselves into a much more um, animal-receptive type of atmosphere, uh, which didn't used to be the case. Zoos were particularly bad for not providing good environmental situations for animals and uh, not really giving them what they would need um, as an imitation of the wild. But I think there's a lot of genuine uh, change being, has been occur- occurring and um, there may be more for the future from zoos as far as um, salvaging the remnants of species that are fast dying out. James, you've been a veterinarian for what, 40 years, I said? 45 years, yeah. 45 years? Yeah. Long time. Yeah. Linda, don't, how don't long have you been a vet? Feel old. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that long. Yeah. <laughs> not, not near that long. <laughs> Actually, I've been doing the radio show for 20 years, and I feel like that's a lifetime. 45 years as a veterinarian, that's a long time. Uh, yeah. Congratulations on that. What made you actually, like, what made you write this book, From Elephants to Mice? You know, I'm not 100% sure, but um, I think I, I just got to feel that I had met a lot of different types of animals in very different backgrounds, and I started to be impressed by the similarities between or among the different species 
um, and the big animals and the little animals like the mice and the big ones like the elephants, um, you start to see certain things in common. And you say, that, that's incredible. That, that's just like what a mouse would do, you know. And you begin to realize that there's a continuity throughout the animal kingdom, which is, uh, is really special and um, leaves an impression on you, a very deep impression. And I guess that's part of the reason. When I started to think that I didn't always go out, I didn't purposely go looking for an elephant to treat, for example. It just happened. It just landed on my doorstep, <laughs> and I ended up going to India. That's a big twice. package to big. land on your doorstep. Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't particularly knowledgeable, in fact, about elephants, but uh, I knew about chronic injury and how to handled chronic injury in animals so it was more that that I was skilled in rather than elephants themselves and in fact when I arrived and looked up at this elephant who was nine and a half feet tall um, which is pretty tall when, when you think that the average house the ceiling's only eight feet up this is nine and a half feet and I think to myself I don't know how this animal thinks I have absolutely no idea what goes through his mind. And I've come all this way. Am I going to be able to do anything? And it took two or three days for it to begin to get to a point where I started to feel like maybe I did understand a little bit about what he was thinking. Because you can't treat a strange animal if you don't know how that species thinks about things. And uh, it was it was pretty fascinating to find that I could come to a point where I could begin to understand what was going through his mind and try to put him at ease and, and not think that I was a threat to him, um, because even though he was much bigger than me, he, he may very well have thought I was a threat. He'd certainly been threatened by other human beings. So is the saying true that, a, that an elephant is truly afraid of a mouse? I don't know. I never saw them with a mouse. I hope not, because... Um, because there's a size variation right there, there something sure so is. huge, afraid of something so small. Yeah, but um, it's hey. funny because one of the stories in my book is about mice. Yeah, I saw that in Chapter 10. James, hold on for a second. We've got to take a little break. When we come back, we'll continue on with James okay. Mahoney. You just he want me to hang on? Yeah, hang on, please. Don't All go right. away. We'll be right back after this commercial break. All right. From Elephants to Mice is the name of the book. From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul by James Mahoney. You can find it in bookstores. You can find it online. But if you've got a question or a comment, pick up the phone and give us a call. 866-606-TALK. 866-606-8255. Don't forget, check us out on the web. We're live on there. Just click on our website, TalkinPets.com. No G in the talking. Click on the dog watch on the computer, and you can watch us and chat with us on the room as well. Give us a call. 866-606-TALK. Talking Pets. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. It's time for school for you and your friends, your furry best friends. Train your dog the fun and easy way with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Teacher's Pet host Pia Silvani teaches you step-by-step -step how to train your dog the fun and easy way. You get eight 30-minute live audio training sessions, complete transcripts of each session, plus a basic training manual to get you and your dog off to a great start. Training begins the moment you bring your dog home. Teacher's Pet Sessions offers positive reinforcement training to shape your dog's behavior and encourages upbeat, enthusiastic responses to ensure that your dog will enjoy learning. Teacher's Pet Sessions dog training is fun at both ends of the leash. So listen, learn, and laugh with your dog with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Get your copy of Teacher's Pet Sessions Volume 1 today. To order, go to TeachersPetSessions.com. Hi, this is Pia Salvani, your host. Bring your dog, tug toy, and treats, and get ready to have some fun. TeachersPetSessions.com. Hi, and welcome to the Family Pet on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Colleen Safford. 
Each week, we'll focus on different topics, child pet safety, child pet training, just how to make an appropriate pet selection for your family. All of these things will be covered in each one of our episodes. So we hope that you will join us at The Family Pet on Pet Life Radio. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. An animal protection group is challenging a Pennsylvania coroner's finding that the death of a circus animal handler when he was kicked by an elephant was an accident. For the Talk of Pets News Brief, I'm Bob Page. California-based in defense of animals, which opposes keeping elephants in captivity, sent a letter to the county coroner arguing that Dumbo, an African elephant, intended to kick Andrew Anderton at the Irem Shrine Circus in Wilkesboro on Friday. The coroner's office said it had received the letter, but they had not yet read it. In the letter, the IDA quotes, Elephant expert Joyce Poole is saying Dumbo may not have intended to kill her keeper with a kick, but she certainly intended to kick him. With a body weighing six tons, elephants are extremely careful and rarely do anything by accident. They have superior sense of hearing and an incredible sense of smell, and they're able to detect minute vibrations via their feet. Dumbo would have known that Anderson was approaching her from behind, and she also would have been able to smell, feel, and hear him. The letter signed by IDA's executive director, Catherine Doyle, said, Removing elephants from the wild and keeping them chained in confined spaces away from contact with other elephants creates a great deal of stress. That stress, in turn, sometimes results in fatal attacks on humans. In asking Cochran to revisit the case, the IDA said its findings of accidental death sends a message that such occurrences are mere accidents, which lull the public into a false sense of security. In fact, this was not an accident or isolated incident, and it's important to the public to understand this before deciding to attend circuses that use wild animals to perform and give rides. The IDA said that since 1990, elephants have been blamed in the deaths of at least 14 people and for injuring more than 135 others just in the United States alone. Reporting for Talking Pets, I'm Bob Page. Once again, you're listening to Talking Pets. I'm John Patch. I'm Dr. Linda Register. We're speaking with James Mahoney. He is the uh, author of From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. Hey, James, when you were out there and, and working 45 years as a veterinarian and, and you came apart writing this book, From Elephants to Mice, what would you say in your mind is the most intriguing or interesting animal that you had the opportunity to work with? They're all intriguing, actually, in, the, in their way. Um, the, is is the there first, one that kind of like made you go wow? Well, a chimpanzee made me go well. A little guy who walked up to me, two and a half year old chimp, and punched me behind the knee <laughs> and looked up at me as though I should get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and that was pretty uh, thrilling. You know, it's amazing, though, that you mentioned a chimp because a lot of people out there think that they can, you know, bring a chimp home and make it a pet, but they don't realize how strong these guys are. In a matter of it, a second, it could rip your arm off. They're extremely strong, but it's it's not even just a question of their strength. It's uh, you, you destroy their lives in the process. They're, they're not meant to be semi-human. They're, they're meant to be chimpanzees. And Correct. You should aim at trying to make their lives as near to natural as possible, which, of course, is very difficult to do, but uh, um, certainly having them as pets is not the way to do it. 
You know, once again, the book is called From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. If you've got a question or a comment, pick up the phone and give us a call. We're going to send you out a complimentary copy of the book from Wiley Publishers, From Elephants to Mice, 866-606-TALK, 866-606-8255. Even if uh, the third call that comes in right now, if you've got a question or not, compliments of James Mahoney and Wiley Publishing. We're going to send you out a copy of the book anyway. From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul, 866-606-TALK. 866-606-8255. Be the third caller, and the book is yours. Dr. Mahoney, what species do you think is the most intelligent other than man? Only because I know some of these guys are really good at outsmarting people. Well, chimps are pretty intelligent. But it's amazing how intelligent some of the other species are. And you often don't realize it because you don't know how to communicate and interact with the animals properly. So consequently, you don't see the real animal. Um, But uh, they're all more intelligent and more reactive than we probably appreciate, or under most circumstances appreciate. James, hold on for a second on that. We're going to come back and, and tackle that a little bit further. We're going to take a little break. When we come back, we're going to continue speaking with James Mahoney. He's the author of From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. i got a quite, a quite a number of more questions for you, James. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Greetings, human. What planet am I on? Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in Paparazzi, Candid Pictures of You and Your Pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No. To my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. Thinking about buying a monkey? How about a ferret or a skunk? Then check out the show that will answer the burning questions, where do you get them? What do you feed them? How do you take care of them? And most of all... What were you thinking? With exotic pet expert and author Bob Tart, every week on demand from PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Out of Little Rock, Arkansas, an ecologist with the National Park Service said the Buffalo National River appears to have no contamination from nearly year-long sewer leak into a tributary. A Farron usury said the tests have found E. coli bacteria levels in the river are well below state standards. A broken pump station at Marble Falls allowed raw sewage to flow into Mill Creek, which flows into the Buffalo. Dr. Linda? Louisville, Kentucky. The zoo is asking for help in naming a baby male Maasai giraffe. The baby was born January 11th. The zoo plans to select three names from submissions and let public vote on the winner at the kiosk on the zoo's front plaza April 30th to May 16th. So, if you want to enter, Google it. They didn't leave a website. Out of Fort Worth, Texas, zoo directors across the state who said they cannot understand why their popular facilities are not eligible for federal stimulus money have refused to give up trying to secure funds. About 70 years ago, construction crews used Depression-era stimulus money to build monkey and alligator exhibits, a concession stand, and a rock picnic shelter at the zoo. Concord, New Hampshire. Biologists say the winter survey of bats in the state shows that five of eight species have been affected by white-nose syndrome. 
a fatal disease that has spread to bats in at least 11 states. The Fish and Game Department said bat population numbers declined over 66% since last year. White nose syndrome was first discovered in New York Cave in, two, in 2006. Okay, so what is it? Is it a fungus? Is it a bacteria? Is it a genetic disorder? They don't explain what this thing is. Out of Bloomington, Indiana, 15 years after the state began releasing hundreds of river otters and waterways statewide, wildlife biologists said the furry mammals once considered extinct in the state are now thriving. At Musicatuck National Wildlife Refuge near Seymour, park ranger Donna Stanley estimates that several hundreds of the creatures now call the area home. Once again, you're listening to Talking Pets. I'm John Patch. And Dr. Linda Register. We're speaking with James Mahoney. He's the author of From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. If you've got a question, give us a call at 866-606-TALK, 866-606-8255. Don't forget, you can check us live on the web. Just click on the TalkingPets.com. No G in the talking, by the way. Click on the dog watching the computer, and you can watch us right now. And you can also communicate with us in our chat room. Don't forget about Twitter. We're on Twitter and also Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Talkin' Pets Radio fans and Twitter.com forward slash Talkin' Pets Radio. Give us a call at 866 606 8255. This is Talkin' Pets. Hey, 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 you. Hey, 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 you. Baby, how you doing? Do you mind if I come talk to you? Hey, 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 you. Baby, what's your name so I don't have to say hey, 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 you. Baby, what's your sign? I know that's lame, but can I walk with you? And once again, you're listening to Talking Pets. I'm John Patch. And Dr. Linda Register. Congratulations to Donna in Pullman, Washington. She's getting a complimentary copy of the book, From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. You're going to enjoy that book, Donna. That's Donna out in Pullman, Washington. We'll get that right out to you. And it's by the author, James Mahoney. James, Linda had asked you the question about the intelligence of animals. But, you know, the one thing that I think is fascinating, and it's intriguing to think how people think about this, because we eat animals every day. Um, But the ability of these animals to actually experience, like, human emotions and dignity, courage, love. And they do struggle, actually, to succeed in their own life, don't they? They do. For sure they do. And it doesn't matter how big or small they are. They all do that. And that's the one... One of the things they have in, in common with each other and have in common with us. And what we've got to stop doing is automatically assume that animals are below our levels and therefore don't waste your time even looking for special things about them. They're, they're all there. It's just that we're so ignorant we sometimes don't know how to look. You know, I'm glad you said that because I say that quite a bit on the show that, you know, so many people are ignorant about many issues out there in life. Um, Don't mean it in a bad way when I say no, that. No, I, I agree, and I'm, I'm, the, I'm the same way as well. But it actually is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now another thing, too, I mean, what about the importance of communication within a species and, like, interspecies understanding? Is that uh, possible? Within the same species, obviously, it's one of the greatest cruelties is to have animals in such a way that they can't communicate because that's a big part of life communicating with those around you that understand you and uh, cutting them off from that is is an enormous cruelty and I guess because we don't speak chimpanzee or dog or mouse language we don't tend to think of animals living in a, in a sort of a silence, actually, where there's no nothing said back to them that they can understand. Well, if you've got a question, give us a call at 866-606-8255. That's the number to call, 866-606-TALK. Actually, the fifth call that comes out right now to our producer, Zach, will send you out a complimentary copy of the book, From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. It's by Wiley Publishing. The author is James Mahoney. We're speaking with him right now. The book comes out on the, you said the 27th, correct, James? Apparently, that's the date, yep. Okay, so the 27th of this month. Check it out in your bookstores. You can also check it out online. And, you know, I want to ask you, you know, when, you, when I was talking about the chapters and you get into the Caribbean Trio in Chapter 3, Chapter 4, Survival of the Fittest. Yes. You know, in, in mankind versus animals, it seems like in this world of humans, everybody's trying to survive in terms of their jobs and to, to feed their families and all. But when you look at it in the wild, you've got a lion that would actually be in Africa and 
would survive quicker if it's healthier and all to bring down a gazelle. So what do you get into in that chapter, and what do you mean by survival of the fittest in that, in that part of the book? Well, it was uh, the chapters based on my observations, or my wife and I, observations of um, a pair of flickers and a pair of starlings. And flickers, as you know, are American um, woodpeckers. I do now. (laughs) Natural species. You didn't know? Uh, No, I wasn't sure what you meant by a flicker. (laughs) (laughs) I was hoping it was clean. (laughs) I thought maybe that was like, you know, I think, what, you're originally from, uh, aren't you from Ireland? So I'm like thinking, hmm, flicker. Okay. I'll try not to say something, really. (laughs) Yeah, because we're live. My my mind go over time now. (laughs) Hold on for a second, James. When we come back, we've got to take a little break. You know, we've got to go out to the breaks and all. But um, hold on. We'll come right back and talk a little bit more about those flickers. Yeah. (laughs) 866-606-TALK 866-606-8255 Fifth Call to Come In is getting a complimentary copy of the book from Elephant's Demise and you can read about Flickers too in Chapter 4 Survival of the Fittest 866-606-8255 I'm John Patch and Dr. Linda Register and this is Talkin' Pets Talkin' Pets we'll be right back after a short pause well, four to be exact Got questions about your hound's health? Need the facts on Fido's fitness or food? You want to unleash your pup's potential? Well, you've come to the right place with Win With Dogs. Here, we learn how easy it is to naturally improve the lives of our furry friends. So sit, stay, and get ready to win with dogs. With me, Raquel Wynn. Exercise, nutrition, interaction, and love make for one healthy, happy hound. Give yourself the gift of knowledge on demand every week right here at Pet Life Radio with me, Raquel Wynn, and Win with Dogs. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. And once again, you're listening to Talking Pets. Bobby, our executive producer. Bobby, is it name that tune? As something tells me it has something to do with Ireland. Yeah, that's close enough. Okay. You win. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Hey, I'm John Patch. And Dr. Linda Register. We're speaking with James Mahoney. He's the author of From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. 45 years as a veterinarian, worked with all different types of animals. It's an intriguing book. We understand, actually, Bobby researched it and found out that the book is available now online. You can get it at Amazon.com. Right, Bobby? Yeah, or feel free to stop by our Facebook or Twitter pages, and the links are there. And you can go right there and get it. How do you uh, give us a pass Facebook there? Facebook.com slash Talking Pets Radio fans. Twitter.com slash Talking Pets Radio. And congratulations to Marianne in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She is getting a copy of the book uh, from Elephants to Mice. She was the fifth caller to call in, so uh, congratulations, Marianne. You're getting a copy of the book from Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. James Mahoney. James, I, uh, we got a question coming for you, and from a very young girl, I believe. Um, her name is Melissa. Melissa. Hi, Melissa. How are you? You got a question for James? Hello. Melissa, where are you calling from, Melissa. San Jose, California. San Jose? Mm-hmm. And what's your question for uh, for James? Um, how did the chimpanzees touch you? How did they touch me? By punching them, for one. Um, <laughs> well, I was visiting uh, a laboratory, and someone walked out through a door leading a, a young chimpanzee. And when he saw me, he sort of scrunched up his face and walked up to me and punched me in the back of the knee. And he didn't want me there. He thought I shouldn't have been there, so that was his way of telling me to leave. But um, it really caught my attention and made me... I'd never actually been in contact with a chimpanzee before, ever. That was my first 
time. And it was very, uh, really deep in my memory after that. Have you ever seen a chimpanzee, Melissa? No, I haven't. You haven't? Oh, well, you should go and see them. You, they're, they're, in, they're in the zoo there in, in uh, Los Angeles. Actually, in, in, you're in the San Francisco area, Melissa, so there's a, there's oh, a great zoo, the the zoo there, actually. Yeah. yeah, the San Francisco Zoo, is, it's, they do a good job there, actually. One of the vets that used to be on the show here with us, her name is Melissa Jeske. She actually, her husband works there. And um, so I would, yeah, I would definitely recommend spending some time in, you know, looking at the chimpanzees and observing them. You'll learn a lot from them. And one of the things that we're going to do too, Melissa, is we're going to send you out a copy of the book from Elephants to Mice. And there's a lot of intriguing reading in here for you. How old are you, Melissa? Eleven. You're eleven years old. So uh, enjoy this book because you'll get a lot of it, a lot out of it, and you'll be able to actually learn a lot of different things about, you know, the animals that it talks about. Thank you. Stay on the line, Melissa, and speak with Zach, our producer. We're going to get your address there in San Jose, and we'll ship you out a copy of the book. It was nice to All talk right, to you. you. Nice to talk to you. Thanks, Melissa. That's Melissa yeah. out there in San Jose, California, listening on KLIV. She's getting a copy of the book from Elephants to Mice, 11 years old. You know, it's amazing because, you know, doing radio for so long, James, y- you do touch a lot of different people out there, and either, of all ages, from 11, like Melissa, to all the way up into the 80s, which we have. Um, so one of the things, that, you know, it's funny because Melissa mentioned the chimpanzees and you were talking about them. What's your opinion or what's your comments on that woman that had a chimpanzee living with her for all that amount of time, and then a friend came over, yes, and then the chimpanzee attacked her, and she lost most of her face yes. and her hands. In her eyes. Yeah. She lost her eyes. Well, you know, we can't judge an animal for for responding in that way. But we have to bear in mind that animals were not evolved to live in really strange and foreign environments. And... Animals that have lived for a long time or maybe all their life in captivity have some distorted views on the world. And uh, human beings can sometimes make the wrong step and set the the animal off. And that can happen with elephants for sure, Um, even with dogs, let's face it. Dogs bite people sometimes uh, just because the person does something silly like... uh, walk into the house and stamp their foot or something uh, didn't mean any harm but the dog took it as a threat and bites Um, that's much more likely to happen with animals like elephants and chimps though and with very serious consequences but it's very sad for the animal too we have to it's a tragedy for the the person or the two I don't think a lot of people a lot of people don't look at the big picture uh, they, they, you know, it seems like in the human species, everybody wants to, you know, outdo their neighbor, um, yeah. and they they want to have something that somebody else doesn't have, but they don't realize what they're actually doing to a living, breathing creature that is very similar to humans, of course, to ourselves. Yeah. But you know, in the in the, again, the chapters that you have left, humor and animals, you get into in chapter five, chapter six, the gang of four, chapter seven, a story of love, chapter eight, personality and animals, chapter nine, great escapes. Chapter 10, like you talked about, Three Wild Mice. And Chapter 11, The Last of the Sparrows. Those are some of the chapters that people can check out when they purchase the book. Again, you can find this book in your bookstores. You can find it online. And like Bobby said, you can go to our Twitter and Facebook, and that will take you right to it, Talking Pets Radio. But again, From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul, from James Mahoney. James, it was a great pleasure speaking with you, and I wish you the best with this book. I love book, books like this that really get into the depth of the feelings and, you know, and the courage of animals, because I think, I think a lot of people just put their eyebrow up and go, oh, it's just an animal. It's not. No, no, it certainly isn't. So, no. I mean, congratulations Thank on putting you. together a fantastic book. All right. It's, it's been very nice to meet you. You too, and give give our best to and uh, Linda, Doctor Linda. Yes. Yes, it's been very nice to meet you. Nice speaking with you too. All right. Our best to your family, and and keep doing uh, you know all the all the good the great welfare and everything for the animals out there. We really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks so much, James. Bye bye. Bye bye. James Mahoney, the author of From Elephants to Mice: Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. Great book. Check it out in bookstores. Check it out online by James Mahoney. And congratulations to the people that are getting a copy of the book, like Donna in Pullman, Washington, also Marianne in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 
And uh, congratulations to Melissa, 11 years old in San Jose, California, listening on KLIV. She's getting a copy of the book as well with a great question. From all of us here, you know, don't forget, check out the book, From Elephants to Mice, Animals Who Have Touched My Soul. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You're listening to Talking Pets. I'm John Patch. And Dr. Linda Register. 866-606-8255. Talking Pets. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Pets can be a wonderful addition to your life because they're a member of the family. Keeping them healthy and happy is important. Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor with veterinary media consultant and veterinarian Dr. Bernadine Cruz. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile, or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets. The Pet Doctor, on demand every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. And once again, you're listening to Talking Pets. I'm John Patch. I'm Dr. Linda Register. How are you, Doc? I'm all right. 45 years. You see yourself going 45 years as a veterinarian? I hope so. I was talking to my a girlfriend of mine a couple months ago, and I said, you know, I'm never going to retire. One, I can't afford to. But two, I don't know. The maternity leave was hard enough on me. I don't see myself ever retiring. Maybe you'll be sat on by an elephant. You know, I wanted to ask him that question if that was real. You ever see that thing on the internet? I mean, not that you can believe everything you see on the internet, but where that elephant sat down on the on the guy that was cleaning his poop. It's happened several times. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's been confirmed. It's true. Yeah, yeah. happened locally. But Solidly. Didn't, didn't the guy die? Mm-hmm. Like he went right up there. <laughs> it's a crappy way to die. <laughs> <It> really is. <laughs> wow. Could you imagine though? I can't imagine. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe if that had happened, the guy would have lived. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> maybe it would have blew him out. But 45 Years as a Veterinarian, great book from elephants to mice. Um, I totally recommend I love books like that that talk about the feelings and emotions of animals. Uh, Jeffrey Mason is probably one of my favorite of all times, and um, actually James Mahoney did reference a lot of his book. So check it out, From Elephants to Mice. You can find it in bookstores. You can also find it online. But, you know, he talked about a lot of different animals that he worked with, Dr. Linda, but as a veterinarian yourself, I mean, is there a certain animal that you would say, I mean, I know you work basically with dogs and cats, but besides the typical dog and cat, is there an animal that you worked with that maybe you thought was kind of cool, you know, that kind of like spoke out to you or reached out to you? I like rats and guinea pigs. Really? No. Yeah, rats are actually really, really smart. You know, it's so weird that you say that because guinea pigs, you know, a lot of people have guinea pigs, Mm -hmm. but, you know, I, I don't really see too many people with rats, but I have. And they'd love them. And yeah, they say they're really super cool. intelligent. They are. They're super smart. Well, you know, rats and mice rule the world. True. So, I mean, but I just don't think I want a rat. They're actually doing my experiments arm. on us. Probably are. We just don't know it. You know, there was that big question that came out on the show we talked about last week, if you were tuned and in. And the answer's 42. That if, if um, you know, do you believe that aliens are walking amongst us? That was one of the news stories that we did. Of course I do. And maybe they're known as rats. Maybe they're aliens. Or talk show hosts. Good. Yes. Right there. He's got it. All just talk show hosts, to guess. radio and TV are aliens. Yeah, but not animal Oprah talk show is hosts. the number one alien. Well, there goes, Next to Ellen DeGeneres. There goes her ratings. Eight six 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 zero six talk 866-606-8255. But... You know, working with rats, working with guinea pigs, working with dogs, working with cats, you've got the pleasure of actually working with animals, which a lot of people said they would like to work with any day over working with people. Yeah, unfortunately, I still got to work with the owners. Yep, there you go. It's hard to actually teach an owner. That's why That's why people need to take their dogs to puppy classes, not to teach the puppy, but to teach them. Exactly. 866-606-TALK. Spay and neuter your pets. Help control that pet population. Congratulations to uh, James Mahoney, the author of From Elephants to Mice. It's a great book. 
And uh, congratulations to the people that are getting a complimentary copy. But go out and buy one, actually, at your pet stores or your bookstores or, or your online book club. or your book club. I'm John Patch. And Dr. Linda Register. Franklin Thomas. And Zach at Business Talk and Lifestyle Talk Radio Networks. We say goodbye for now. You're such a mess over there. Did you finally wake up? Yeah, I'm wide awake now. Thanks. Right, sounds good. This is Talking Pets. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.